Well, welcome. It's good to see everybody. I have. Oh, you, that's not my boat. So I don't know whose that was. It was just laying in here when I got here. So, so it's it's Lori's now. All right, there you go. Enjoy it. Read away. So. <laughs> All right. Well, I have asked uh, Pastor Bubba Stahl to open us in prayer tonight. So would you mind doing us that honor, sir? And we will jump in tonight. Our Father in heaven, Lord, there is no one like you. But we pray that tonight and throughout the world, today, that your name will be honored, that you will be magnified and glorified. Holy Spirit come and be and spread throughout the earth and in our mind. May your kingdom come and may your will be done, not our will, your will be done. Give us tonight uh, spiritual nourishment and be a drink for it all and be take a spiritual and physical healing from people tonight. Lord, we are grateful that you have given your son Jesus Christ of all of our sins. Change us to be forgiving people as you are forgiveness. Amen. Lead us not into temptation, or but lead us away from it, and give us an overcoming faith victorious to walk through it with our eyes upon you. Now open our eyes that we may behold wondrous things. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right. Well, we're going to jump in, So, but we're going to start with a little review before we get into some new stuff, and we're going to do things a little different tonight as we go along, so I'll just go ahead and tell you, all right, we're gonna, there's going to be some group participation tonight uh, to start applying some of what we learned, so I'm just going to go ahead and prepare you now for a little bit of that uh, so that it'll sink in, all right? But before we get there, now that I've made you nervous and you're probably not going to listen to anything I say for the next few minutes, but uh, it won't be painful, I promise. Nobody has to get up in front, of, in front of the room, okay? That'll just go ahead and ease your mind. Nobody has to do that. All right, but let's review just a little bit. So in your notes that you've got tonight, let's, uh, let's fill in some blanks here. That'll kind of help us review a little bit of where we've been, and then we're going to kind of review where we ended last week before we dump into some new stuff. So as we've been talking about becoming gospel fluent, there's a word I want us to keep in the forefront of our minds about when we, we, how we become fluent. All right, how we become fluent in the language of the gospel is through immersion. Okay, it's, it is so much, it requires, okay, that next blank, gospel fluency requires, immersion is not just a worship service. Okay, so that would be the next one there, right? We, to become fluent in a language, it requires immersion. And so when we're talking about that, we're saying immersion does not equal, gospel fluency does not equal just attending a worship service. It's, it's more than that. <coughs> Would you agree with that statement? That just attending a worship service on Sunday morning is probably not going to get into us the things that we've been talking about alone, right? It's part of it, but alone, it's not going to accomplish that, right? So let's go a layer deeper, okay? Surely... Right, in addition to attending a worship service, right, gospel fluency. It requires Wednesday night class. It does. It's right. Wednesday night class. Is that is that the answer, right? How about how about this? How about what if we filled it in here? Gospel fluency requires more than a growth group or Sunday school class, okay? You you have permission to write either of those in the blank that you want to, okay? Is it is it more than that? I mean, is that statement accurate? That, that if we're going to be fluent in the gospel, it requires more than a worship service. It requires more than a growth group, more than a Wednesday night Bible study, maybe more than another Bible study, right? Because I'm sure many of you all are involved in Wednesday morning Bible study, 
Tuesday morning, Friday morning, right? I'm sure, you know, you may be involved in two, three, four Bible studies, right? Does it require more than just knowledge, like, you know, that, that, we're, that we're taking in? Yeah, it does. And here's, here's kind of where we're going to end up tonight. So this will just kind of whet your appetite a little bit. Gospel fluency requires regularly being with others who know and love Jesus who speak about him often and commit together to regularly remind one another of the gospel when they forget it, right? So just attending something is not going to do it, right? It's, it's this pattern, it's this rhythm of our lives where we're regularly with believers, right? So it can happen in worship services, it can happen in growth groups, it can happen in Bible study, Right? But it's this idea of we've got to be doing life with, with others, right? like-minded, who are striving to know Christ, who want the gospel, who are preaching the gospel to themselves on, on a regular basis so that we are helping to, as Scripture says, to sharpen one another, right? to spur one another on. Right? That, that's, that's what's needed. right? And so that's why the body of Christ is so essential to this, right? We, we can spend a lot of time in God's word, and this is why I kind of wanted to go back to this before we move forward tonight, because we saw last week that our tendency, right, even if we have a lot of understanding of the gospel, right, in our flesh, which this, is, this one is more of a representation of this, in our flesh, right, without the body of Christ to encourage us, Right to sometimes in a loving way remind us that you know maybe our thinking is off or or we we've gotten so in the middle of a crisis or a, or a, or something going on in our life that we're starting to to not think right to not be acting in a way that shows who we are right in our flesh we have the tendency right to move from this direction, right? We talked last week, we talked about root to fruit or fruit to root, right? We can get here where we start to let what's going on around us inform, right? All this up here, we let it inform this, right? We start from here and we let this define who we are, right? All these things, right? If we're worried, right? We, we use some of these here, right? We said we're worried, right? We use fearful, Right, we used angry, right? We said maybe we're overwhelmed, right? This is kind of the fruit that, that we're seeing in our life based on our circumstances or, or different things going on, right? And so because we're feeling these things, we let these things define who we are. And from here, we let that define what we believe God is doing, or what God has done, or, or how he feels about us. And from there, that starts to inform, in a lot of ways, who we believe God is in, in this moment, right, when we start here, right? And so without the body of Christ around us, right, if we're the only one <laughs> that we're doing life with, right, because we can come to a worship service, we can even attend a Sunday school class, and we can come to a Bible study, and nobody knows the real us. Right? Is that, is that a fair statement? That you can come and just go through the motions like Pastor Jason said Sunday in worship, right? We can play church, right? We, we can do that when it's just about attending. We can keep people at arm's length and we can keep those walls up and nobody really knows kind of maybe this is kind of what's going on on the inside. But when we commit to doing life together, Right? When we let people see us, right? we, we remove some of those walls. Right? We allow some vulnerability to come in because we know there's a, a trusted circle of people who we know are pursuing Christ. We know they want to see the gospel transform their lives, right? just like we do. And we've given each other permission to encourage us when we need to be encouraged. Right, to challenge us maybe in some ways when we need to be, to call out in a loving way, hey, man, I've noticed you seem so overwhelmed, right? You've lost your joy 
in your walk with the Lord. You just seem to be going through the motions. What's going on? How can I, you know, how can I pray for you, right? Things like that. The, who have we let into our lives? Because if we haven't, right, this can very easily be the way we slip into to living, right? And we can start from the top and work our way down, right? And end up, remember you, the example I used last week in your homework was to kind of work through this yourself. Remember my example last week? What did, which one, what did I share last week? Who's got a good memory? Like in my flesh. <laughs> You've got to live. <laughs> now, Sadie doesn't get to talk about me. I don't, I don't want Sadie to say anything. <laughs> she won't be nice. Um, Dan, what you got? Oh, yeah, go ahead. All right. Yeah, I, I, I shared that one of the areas where I can, I can struggle, right, is, is just a fear of what people think about me. Right, that, that that sometimes can be a crippling area just of weakness in my own life. And when I don't let the gospel deal with that in my own life, I showed you like the things that kind of come out in my life, right? I can I can get paranoid. I can think everybody's talking about me, right? I've done something wrong. And I get so distracted from doing what God wants me to do, and I start worrying about how do I keep people happy. Right, and it can and it can it can steal my joy. Right, I, I'm not doing things for the right reasons to glorify God. I'm doing it to please people. Right, and it can suck the life out of out of me. Right, and so then you know you can get anxious. You can just get tired, and and you know and then other other issues can start. So we I, I shared that with you, and I said when you get in this condition, I start to think, well, who am I? I start thinking I'm not good enough. Right, I don't measure up. Right. And from there, right, I start to think, well, well, maybe God is maybe I've done something. Right. Maybe there's something about me. God's angry. Right. I can get in my head in all kinds of ways that I know aren't really true. I know they don't line up with Scripture, but my goodness, can I get in my own head and say, well, God's just left me to do this on my own. Right. Or or I've just got to, you know, I've, I've, I've messed up, and so he's just, I'm having to work my way out of this. And I start thinking, so God's just kind of left me here to deal with this. So then I start thinking, well, maybe God's love is conditional, right? I mean, we can slip into all kinds of crazy behaviors that if you were to challenge us, we would say, oh, no, I don't believe God changes. I don't believe he changes his mind. I don't believe his love is conditional. I don't believe he's abandoned me. I know he's never, he will never forsake me. He'll never leave me, right? I know that Christ died for me. So it's not about if I'm good enough, if I can do enough to measure up, right? I know all of those things, but left to myself with no one in my life to preach the gospel to me, right? I can easily be on this side, right? So one of the beautiful things about community and why we need to talk about as part of being fluent in the gospel is not just being immersed in it personally, but being committed to being together regularly with a group of people who will do it with us is because we need this to be called out in our life sometimes so that we, we do it the right way, right? We go from the root to the fruit. Right? So somebody explain this one to me. How, what are we talking about here? What, what's, what's different? Right? We said if that's kind of when we're walking in the flesh, right, and we're, we're letting this inform. So if this one over here is spirit, who can help me out with this one? Right, but where does it start? Right? We, we're going to get to where it, what it produces. Yeah, we. Okay. So we. All right. So we start here. Yeah. Right. There's a huge difference from here working our way down, right? As opposed to it recognizing it, repenting of it, and saying, wait a minute, I'm not going to let my feelings inform my understanding of God. I'm going to start with what I know to be true about God as revealed in his word, and I'm going to let that work its way up and produce the fruit of the spirit that he wants to produce in my life. 
correct? So we would. We would start here. Well, who is God? What do I know to be true about him? Well, from there then, because this is true of him, what do I know about what he has done? How do I see him active? What, what has he done throughout history? What has he done already in my life? How has he been faithful? How have I seen his goodness in my own life? Right? And from that understanding, because of who he is and because of what he's done, there's where my identity comes from. And I can rest in that. And resting in that, right, then begins to produce a fruit in us that looks very different from here, right? So that's, so, so this was good for us to work through, to think through as an exercise. Yeah, I need to do that in my own life. And that was your assignment last week, was to sit down and examine some areas of your life, maybe where you realize, man, I've really got a propensity here to slip into some really bad thinking, right? Some areas of weakness in my own life. And I ask you to kind of work through this and then work through what it would look like if we started from the root and worked our way to the fruit, right? So that's a healthy thing to do by ourselves. But let me ask you this. Is this a good thing to help each other do? within the body? Yeah, because sometimes we need that little push, don't we? And another thing is that you could put Christian in quotes next to this, and you could put Christian with an exclamation mark on this one, because that's what the world sees. The world will start, if they see all this fruit here, they'll start questioning, who is this God you say believe? What has hmm. he done for you, and who are you? Over here, when they see this fruit, they will understand who the God is. They will know what he's done for you. And they'll see who you are as a child of God. And Amen. they'll know you're a Christian. Amen. Or over here, you're a Christian. Yeah. And they'll have just as many questions here because your life isn't answering anything. Amen. You know, and next week, I think that will very much speak into next week as we look at, okay, if we are looking at how the gospel works in us individually, tonight looking at how we are to, as a body of believers, see the gospel at work in us, in our community, right? And we're immersing ourselves there. Those things together are going to do that very thing, right? The world will then be able to take notice and see something different about us and how the gospel has changed everything about us, right? And that's, that's so critical, right? And we can't jump to there. That, that's the thing, right? I mean, it's very easy to say, well, go out and share your faith with somebody, right? Go out and tell people about Jesus, right? Just, you know, roll up your sleeves and do it. And we can, right? We can be faithful even in, in difficult situations to share our faith, right? To share who Christ is, but combining words with a life, that shows that what we say to be true is true in the way we live is a powerful testimony that, that God can use to see a transformed life by the gospel. So that's where we're headed even next week is to look at what that might look like through there. All right, anybody? All right, we've got, all right, we'll take like a couple of minutes here. All right, don't have to go into a ton of detail, right? This is not what I said we were going to do a little group participation. This is just spur of the moment. I thought it'd be fun to, 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 to offer this, all right? Does anybody want to give us just a really, who, who's feeling very willing to be uh, transparent, would you be willing to share any of your, your homework, right? Like in like, just to give us a really general, like, hey, here's one that I did, like where I struggle, and here's what it produces in me, right? And here's how it's at work. But when I think about it this way, here's how God corrects that through the gospel. Anybody? I shared. It wasn't too painful. I, I did it last week. Anybody want to? Totally voluntary. Oh, Jason will go. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
And so in, in that, right, you said it kind of paralyzed you, right? That could be a fruit that you paralyzed, right? Kind of lost, like, the desire to yeah, I, I just, ran just ran the other way, right? Because you were basing your value on, right? And so from there, that started make. I mean, then how could that have, I guess, in formed your understanding of what God was doing in your life or who he was. Yeah, God, God, God particularly uh, is for you if you're, if you're good at stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I think men deal with this a, a ton in their career. Mm -hmm. right? All right. Am, I, am I good enough leader? Am I good enough provider for my family? Like, uh, can I climb that social ladder? Sure. Um, and so, like, like, am I good at this stuff? And, and judge based on performance. But then God is happy with you, and he's blessed you. Yeah. Yeah. So see, I mean, so we can, so I hope that's just helpful to see how we all can do this and, and without even really realizing we're doing it, right? I mean, we can just, you know, have a day where we're just anxious about something, right? They're, they're, we're dealing with something, right? And, and just in that, just that very moment, that circumstance can so overwhelm it that our, our perspective can completely just on a dime change, Right? And we start questioning all kinds of things, you know, that, that we know we believe, right? If you were to, like I said, if you were to ask us, you know, right, is God faithful? Yes, God's faithful. But man, that's not the fruit that your life is producing that you believe that, right? I mean, there's times, if we're really honest, that's, that's true. You know, um, a lot of you know that uh, Carol and I lost a daughter this time last year in a very tragic scenario. Mm. And we lived both of those it was within a few days to a few months because it, right off the bat we wondered what did we do wrong hmm. why did we let her get involved in governmental service or something that could cause her life to be lost and so we, it was a very sad scenario to where it was a simple thing on our part we knew we did something wrong but then shortly thereafter probably within became just the opposite, which is, um, it all, as most lives are, they always say something that you would, we would think would have been kind of this, but we, and she said, you know, we just, she just got to heaven before we did. And when, when she said that, because nobody wants to lose a child before they're stimulated, but it changed everything. It became a confession of faith, and we were proud of what she did, the accomplishments that our faith grew stronger. Mm. Some of the things that were very negative in our mind left. And so we saw the thing start from the bottom of the door. Yeah. And, yeah, that's... 
That's exactly what we're talking about. And I think as as parents, right, I know many of us in here are, um, man, there's really, our kids can really be one of these areas where where we can really get sideways in, in our thinking, right? We start attaching our worth and value to how our kids turn out, right? Or the decisions they're making, especially as they get older, right? We start it can be a fear thing, but it can also be a pride thing if we're honest, right? It's like, what are people going to think about me based on what my kids are doing, right? And so we start, pride starts to fill this tree, right? And, and it starts working its way down, right? And so repenting of that and starting with, you know, over here, no, no, who is God, right? You know, even if I have made mistakes, right? Even if I've done, even if I have come up short, right? Well, God, God is a God of, of forgiveness, right? He's a God of restoration. He's a God of, uh, who, who's, who's given second chances, right? In his son, he's, <laughs> he's given us new life, right? And start, so starting here and working its way up, it's, we need that in so many areas of our life. Um, so this is good, right? And the, again, the point I just want to keep ringing is sometimes... Can we, can we get out of our own heads by ourselves and fix this? Sure, at times we can. But I'd also put before you, there have been times I can't even, I can't get out of my own head. I've needed a brother, right, in Christ. I've needed a community of believers around me, right, who, who will call me out on on, where, on how what they see being produced in my life and, and question, right, just in a loving way, hey, is everything okay? Right, I don't have time to tell you the whole story, but the reason I am still in ministry is because I had a community around me of, of people, right, and they didn't even live in the same town as me, but, but we stayed close enough that when I started running from ministry because of just some, some tough experiences, Right, I had one brother call me, and I was back working for Chick Fil A full time, and I was just I had I had convinced myself this is how I'm supposed to serve the Lord, right? Even though I knew He had called me to vocational ministry, and and I had uh, a dear friend just call me up one day, and we were talking. He was how's it going? How are things going? And I was telling him, and I was selling him, even though I didn't believe it, I was selling him on how great things were at Chick Fil A, how I was man, I'm gonna own my own store. Um, this is my ministry, right? I'm going to pastor my employees. When I was a junior in high school, that must have been what God was calling me to, that I surrendered to, was to pastor my employees at Chick-fil-A. Um, I got, and, but I didn't even believe it, but I was trying to convince myself of it. And he just listened, and he goes, man, he said, that's great. He said, but you know, Daniel... He said, you may be the only person in this world that I know who, and he stands before the Lord, you're going to have to give an account for selling chicken sandwiches. Uh, and I was like, <laughs> I got so mad. Yeah, I was so mad at that moment. I'm like, who are you? <laughs> you don't know. You don't know why I'm here. You don't know the pain, right? You don't know blah, blah, blah. I had, but man, but you know, the Holy Spirit took that and you know, basically within six months, I was back in full-time ministry is what is basically what happened, right? Because I needed somebody else, right, to speak the gospel into my life, right? And I knew exactly what he meant, right? And even in just in that really sarcastic little sentence, I knew what he meant, right? Well, you know, we know all the answers. Yeah. I mean, I, I know. Oh, yeah. What the word says. Yeah. Oh yeah. Easily oh yeah. And we can convince ourselves, we can justify our behavior even though we know it's not right. We can figure ways around it. Right? I'm not running from the Lord. I'm not being disobedient, right? It's just this is a more effective way to do ministry. Right? I, I don't have all the I don't have all the problems of a, of a church, right? I can I can I'm free to do, right? I can convince myself of all these things, right? But the problem was it was disobedience, and I needed somebody to point that out in my life. So that's why we need each other, right? And I was in church, but nobody in the worship service that I was attending every week knew enough to be able to speak that into my life, right? I was involved in a Sunday school class, but man, you know, 
I, I had all the right words to say there, so nobody there knew it, right? But I did. I had, over time, I had this rhythm in my life of this group of people that I had done life with who had permission to speak into my life, right? And that's what God used. That's why we need that, because we're all going to be in situations like that throughout our life. So, we got to move on a little bit because I want to get to some other stuff. So that's kind of that next section, right? A rhythm of reminders. So this is an exercise that we're not going to take time to really do it in depth right now. But here's what I really want you to think about. Who are those groups of believers that are already in your life? Right? That you're already doing life with now. That It may be your growth group or Sunday school class. It may be a Bible study that you're in. It may be the people who live in your home, right? Or it may be a combination of all of those, right? But how, so here's the press. How do you intentionally use the body of Christ that's already around you to do these things that we're already talking about, to get that rhythm in your life of people who are going to remind you of the truth of the gospel and how that defines you? right, and how you're going to be that for them, right? So, you know, how are you going to do that in your homes, right? Because it can be multiple places, right? How are you doing that in your home? How about your friends, right? Maybe coworkers, right? For those of you on a job, right? Maybe, maybe there's a group of believers that are, are in your workplace that you could, you know, be intentional about saying, you know, we're going to carve out time. Maybe we're going to go to lunch together once a week, twice a month, right? And the whole reason we're going to do that is just to check in on each other, to hear really how, how we're doing, where are we struggling, and allow other people to help give us just a gospel-centered perspective on, on what we're dealing with, right? To help us see things clearly, right? There, there's so many different ways. And I think that, that's sometimes where we fall short is we just don't recognize the people God has already put in our lives. We start thinking, oh, great. I got to find another group, right? I'm already in a Bible study. I'm already in a Sunday school class. I'm already serving in children's ministry. You're telling me I've got to find another hour of the week to meet with another group of people and prepare another study, right? I don't have time for all that. I'm not saying you should. Right? I think sometimes less is more, right? <laughs> but what I'm saying is, how do you intentionally use those groups of believers God's already put in your life? But you know, it's clear that you've got to be willing to let them in your life. You know, uh, when you think about it, a lot of people, whether it's insecurities or things that they don't want to talk about, they can have that right around them. You know, one of the things, you know, children's ministry, youth ministry, family ministry, that was my world for, for a lot of years. Um, I mean, one of the things I love to share with parents was create rhythms in your homes, right? Because families are so stretched, right? They're so busy when it's sports, piano, activities, band, whatever it is and then jobs, and, and all the stuff, right? It's like, okay, I'm not saying try to find more hours in your day. I'm just saying think intentionally about those rhythms of your life and find times you're already together and use them better to talk about the things of God, right? So if you know there's a time of day, like you are going to eat a meal together, right? How can you use that meal time? for gospel conversations, right? If you know you're gonna be in the car driving back and forth to practices, rather than just mindlessly letting the kids play on tablets or, or you know, whatever, it's like, no, turn everything off and have a conversation about the Lord, right? And so I, that press with parents of, no, you've just gotta use what you've got already and create these rhythms where you are talking about the things of God with your kids, right? That, that, that's good, that's good information. Those are good principles for all of us to apply, right? Are there people that you are already in the habit of doing date nights with or going to dinner with, 
right? Do you already have like a, a, a group of people that are believers that you hang out with on a regular basis? What if, what if as a group you said, you know, we're going to use part of that time we're together to just circle up and check in on each other and be able just to, to speak these truths of the gospel and how they affect our everyday lives, right? That's what, I'm, that's what I mean by that, right? We can do that with our families, I mean, my goodness, spouses doing that together. You talk about something that could just just enrich a marriage in some incredible ways, right? But even just your friend groups, right? Parents with your kids, right? I mean, those kinds of things are are so important. Um, You know, one area I was convicted, my daughter, my oldest, is about, you know, this is her senior year of high school. So college is just, you know, it's staring us right in the face, and you know, and I've been praying for her about this decision, about God, that God would open the right doors, that he would direct us to where she should go, and, you know, all these things. I've been praying for her, but she and I were driving to school today, and, man, the Lord just convicted me. We've got 20 minutes in the car together, and we were talking about her college applications, and, and it just hit me, like, this is one of those moments, right? God's given me this moment, Right? This is part of my community, right? My children are part of my community. This is a moment for both of us to be reminded of how the gospel even impacts my, my daughter's future and her college decision. So we just started talking from that perspective about how God is going to use the next four years in her life and how who she is in Christ, yeah, trusting Him to open the right doors. And we just prayed. Like, I grabbed her hand, and we just prayed for like the last 10 minutes on the way to school that God would just direct her steps, that he would give her a peace, that he would open the doors where he wanted her, right? Because these years coming up were really going to set her on a course for her future. But man, I wanted it to be a future that just allowed her to be the woman that God made her to be, right? I mean, all the things I had been praying for her, I said, no, I'm going to pray with her right? That meant a lot to me (laughs) in that moment, right? But my prayer is that God will use that just to plant seeds in her life, right? Of, of, man, the gospel does inform this part of my life too, right? That's what I, those are the kinds of things. How do we use what we've already got in those rhythms of our life to be able to remind ourselves of how the gospel impacts everything we do? So that, that's what that's talking about. So next page, flip over a page here because I want us to get to this. I think this is going to be really meaningful for us to do for a few minutes. So what is it we should be reminding ourselves and our community <laughs> of, right? If we're saying we've got to remind each other of the gospel, right? We've got to be able to speak the gospel into each other's lives. That sounds really good, right? But on a practical level, what, what, I mean, if we were to boil that down, what are we saying? We're reminding each other that Jesus is better, right? Because sometimes it's so easy for us to settle for an imitation, right? It's easy for us to settle for what the world defines as success or what the world defines as happiness or, or you know, what we should set as the goal, goals before us, what winning is, all of those things, right? So, What is it? How do we preach the gospel to each other, right? It's that constant reminder, right? And here's here's what we wrote, a community that's committed to growing in the gospel and gospel fluency together. We don't have to respond to life the way the world does. We can enter into each other's pain and struggles or even good things, right, with much more than just empathy. We can actually bring the good news of the gospel into every situation our group, our, our people are facing. Well, how do you bring the gospel into that? Reminding each other that Jesus is better. Jesus is better. So how do we do that? If we we can even just, because I think sometimes that's helpful to boil that down, right? Like, what is it I'm listening for? What is it, what's the perspective I need? Right, even just that simple statement, right? Those three words, Jesus is better. How do I... How do I understand what I mean by that statement? How does that statement apply to to what it is we're going through? 
So here's what I want us to do for a few minutes. I want us to circle up in groups of, it can be five, it can be seven, right? It, it doesn't, they don't have to be big groups, they don't have to be tiny groups, but I just want us to kind of get in some circles, and here's kind of what I want us to do. I want someone in the group to, it doesn't even have to be a real situation in your life, because I know we all don't know each other great in here, and we're not going to like just, you know, <laughs> open the closets and show everybody, you know, what, you know, like the laundry room door and show everybody what's going on, right? All the dirty laundry. But here's what I want us to do. I want somebody to come up with a hypothetical situation, okay, that's pretty believable about maybe something someone could in the group could be struggling with, right? It could be a crisis. It could just be an everyday struggle. Just somebody come up with a situation, right, that a person could be going through in life. If you want to share a real one, that's fine too. And then I want the rest of the group to use these four questions that you see on page 32, to address that situation. What about the gospel does that person need to hear right now? Based on what they've just shared, right? What is it about the truth of the gospel that we've been looking at now for four weeks? What, 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 what point of the gospel would really impact what they're going through right now? Share that. Somebody in the group, share that. Somebody else could share, what about the gospel has this person forgotten or failed to believe in this moment? Right? Think through that and maybe somebody share that with them. Next one, how is Jesus better than what we have or what we want? This person, maybe, maybe they're, this is where they're struggling. Maybe this is what's stolen their joy, right? How could you remind them that Jesus is better than the thing they're chasing after? Right, if that's the situation that's presented. And then the last one, how does the gospel just bring good news into this situation? It's just practice, right? Just like sometimes, like if we were doing evangelism classes, we would have people circle up and share their faith, right? Somebody be the lost person and somebody try to have a conversation that leads you to be able to share Christ. That's what I want us to do for just a minute or two in these groups. Somebody share our everyday problem or struggle or crisis that you could be going through and the rest of the group basically answer these four questions that would help them deal with the problem that gets presented, right? And if we have time, I'd like to do that. So, you know, throw out, maybe at least get through two problems, right? Nobody needs to preach a sermon, right? I'm not asking you to, like, take one of these questions and build a whole, like, you know, Bible study sermon off of it, right? It's just, it's quick. It's quick statements that are from what we've studied about the gospel. How could I speak into that and answer one of these questions in a way that could help that person, right? So it's just practice because this is the kind of thing we could be doing for each other. So let's do that. I want to take 10 minutes to do that and then we'll come back and wrap up with just a couple of things and we'll, we'll actually be done tonight. So circle up groups, three, four, five, seven. All right, I'll, you guys are all grown-ups. Somebody be the hot mess that has a big problem going on. You come up with that. The other people in the group.
Bye. Thank you, man. <laughs> Over here? Oh, over tabletop. <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah. This lady did this table. She wants to sit with her Sunday All right, let's do five more minutes, okay? Let's do five more minutes and then we'll circle back up for a couple last minute things. Oh, making them do this? I know. <laughs> Gives you a little time. Yeah, I know. I get to breathe. Two minute warning. <laughs> no, nobody's playing. <laughs> Oh, we don't know yet. So we're still working on it. Oh, yeah, it's on the list, but out-of-state tuition will probably... There's no sense in going to a state school that you pay full price. No, I want her to get to go. I, I think it's... I think that she's one that will benefit from it. I think it'll be really good for her to go away. I mean, I want to keep her close selfishly as a dad, but... All right, let me, I love hearing all the conversations, so I almost hate to cut you off, but um, I may make some time to do this next week, too. Uh, maybe we'll circle up into groups again. Or maybe we won't come. <laughs> if nobody comes back, I'll know why. All right, it's like, I don't ever want to do that again. Don't make me... I just wanted to sit and soak. I didn't want to actually have to work on stuff. So. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, let's, um, let's kind of think. I want to think through a couple of things wrapping up here for just a, just a minute or two, and then we'll, uh, we'll call it a night. 
you know, kind of based on, as I kind of watched and listened, um, it really seemed like you guys were kind of, I saw good things happening, right? I saw good conversation, right? So let me ask you this. If you had a group of people in your life, or there was a group already there that you just were more intentional about leveraging those, that group of believers around you, would stuff like this be healthy? Yes. Like moments like that where, you, where that's just part of your rhythm to where there's a group of people, you, you, you say, you know, when we get together, we already get together. So at some point when we're together, we're going to take time to do this very thing, right? We're not going to study another lesson, right? Where, you know, we, we can, you know, we can take the small talk and cut it off for a minute. And we're really going to just get into each other's lives for the purpose of just encouragement and, and edification and to help remind each other of the powerful truths of the gospel and how they inform the way we think and act and talk. Is that life-giving? Right? I mean, I even saw just in the circles, right? There was, a, there was an element of even just joy listening to you guys talk to each other, right? As you were sharing, right? As you were, right? You can get perspectives from somebody that maybe you're so deep in the middle of whatever you're dealing with. You could have, you would have missed that, right? But somebody else, right, who's not there can look at that and say, oh, but have you thought about, man, how Christ, you know, redefines that thing that you're struggling with, right? How the gospel changes our perspective in this area, right? You've kind of drifted back into a fleshly understanding of what you're dealing with, but man, you're a new creation in Christ and you should be looking at it this way, right? I mean, we can offer that to somebody just like they can offer it to us. And so I even just wanted us to have a few minutes to practice that because that's what we mean by how we as a community can remind each other that Jesus is better, that the gospel offers us something better than what the world offers. So just a few other things, right? Just a few other things. What are other things we can do just practically in our lives that keep that reminder, right, for us that Jesus is better, right? So three more, right? They're written in red up here, right? The thing we worked on for two weeks, know the story the big story of Scripture, right? This story of the gospel, those four points we looked at, right? Keep it reminding ourselves of that, but reminding each other of this. By knowing the story of the gospel, it allows us to speak into each other's lives, right? Reminding each other, man, your identity is wrapped up in the wrong things, right? Here's how God defines us, right? Here's, here's who He's made us, right? Yeah, what you're, what you're struggling with. Right? That that if it's a health issue or or if it's if it's just a relationship issue, man, it's part of the fact that man, are, we live in a broken world. Right? It's 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 a result of that. So, you know, there's yeah, I get that you're struggling and your struggle is real because we live in this world, but oh my goodness, Christ came to rescue us, to deliver us, right? to purchase our redemption, right? Not to leave, it, leave us in our brokenness, right? That there's, there's hope because Christ has come, right? And oh my goodness, there's coming a day where he, he's gonna make all things new, right? Scripture says we are a new creation in Christ already, right? So maybe we can remind each other of that, that man, what you're choosing to do, you're living like who you were before Christ, right? But, Stop settling for that because he's made you brand new, right? Or maybe someone's struggling with something that, you know, it will be, maybe it's a health issue that's going to be with them unless God just does a, a, a miracle of healing right here in the present. It's probably going to be something they deal with for the rest of their life. But just gently reminding them, ah, oh, but my goodness, the gospel reminds us of the hope that this is just temporary, right? That, that there's coming a day where, every, where he's going to make all things new. Right? There's so many ways we can use the story to speak into each other's lives. Another thing that we can be doing in our own lives that God, the Holy Spirit, will use in our conversation is just making it a discipline to just be reading through the Bible. Right? The whole Bible. Right? You don't have to do it in a year. Right? You can. Right? But just, just make it a pattern to just constantly be reading through the, through the Bible. You know, mix it up. 
right? There's so many different great reading plans out there. Start in Genesis and just read to Revelation, right? Pick a, pick a few chapters of the Old Testament, pick a few in the New, right? There, there's all kinds of ways to do it, right? But just reading through the whole Bible on a regular basis with Jesus as the focus, right? As you read through Scripture, how do I see Jesus in this text, Right? John 5, verse 39. Right? When Jesus is talking to the Pharisees, he says, Hey, you read the scripture because you think there's life in them. Right? But their focus was all on self. He says, But those scriptures you're reading, they point to me. Right? He was talking about the Old Testament. Right? We can see Jesus all through scripture. And so just making that part of just the rhythm of our own lives of just reading through God's Word, looking for Jesus in every bit of it, you will be amazed at how the Holy Spirit will bring to your mind what you're reading to speak to your own life, but to be able to invest in other people. That's another great practice. And then this one right here, we're going to talk more about this one next week. This will be a big thing that we talk about next week, but it applies here too. Know who the hero is of your story. Right? Think through your testimony, right? And if when you're sharing your testimony, right, if you're the hero of your story, you need to let the gospel inform it a little bit more, all right? But recognize how Christ is the hero <laughs> of your story, right? And then be listening for that in each other's lives too, right, man? Man, I hear a whole lot of, man, me, I tried, I did this coming out in you. But man, the hero of your story is Jesus. Are you dependent upon him in in that situation, right? So these are just three practical things that are on your sheet there that I kind of wanted to close with. What I gave you to do between now and next Wednesday, you'll see on page 33, there is just an excerpt from a sermon by Tim Keller. Uh, He was at a conference at the Gospel Coalition, and he preached a message uh, when he was there about gospel-centered ministry. But this whole text that I gave you is just about how Jesus is better, right? And so so here's kind of what I want you to do. I want you to take some time. It's going to be uncomfortable just like last week's where you had to look at root to fruit and all that. Read through this. Meditate on this these words, because this is straight from Scripture. Read through this, right? Spend some time on it. And then I want you to spend some time praying. But I want you to write it out. I want you to write out your prayer about ways where you need to confess where you've not been living like Jesus is better. Like where, identify those areas. Confess those to the Lord in prayer. Repent of those. Thank him for how you can truly see that he is better, right? And even, you know, a prayer of surrender, commitment. God, I don't want to settle for for less than, right? I want more of you, right? You know, even just that, that prayer, that confession of God, I need to embrace the community of believers you put around me so that I don't forget these things about who you are. This is just some time for you and the Lord to think through some of these things, but starting with this, these words, I think would be a great place to start and allow it to transition into just a time of prayer. Okay, so that's kind of the assignment. Uh, For some homework this week, and then we're going to wrap up next week. All right?